G'day, we're back in the office today, which means we're on the whiteboard and we're looking again. If we're on the whiteboard, we're talking vehicle specifications. This time we're talking safety ratings. And I've wanted to do this video for a little while. It's a little old now, but just bear with me. This comes off the back of the Isuzu D-Max's launch uh, late last year, late in 2020. And a very good ad campaign uh, with one ad in particular, which highlighted the vehicle safety, which is really uh, a clever campaign and also brings to the fore for some potential automotive consumers on the Australian market, a little bit of additional knowledge that they can take into their uh, automotive purchasing decisions. And this came up again just recently with the review um, by ANCAP of the Mitsubishi Express van and its new crash rating. And that gives us a little bit of a context. It makes it a little bit more, a little bit clearer about what's going on here with the D-Max's claim. So let's have a look at that. So the new D-Max is on the market. It's a sister vehicle now of the BT50, which was previously the sister vehicle of the Ford Ranger. The Isuzu D-Max is the first utility vehicle to be awarded an ANCAP five-star safety rating on the current ANCAP regulations. Now, lots of utility vehicles, lots of dual cabs have been rated five stars, which we'll have a look at. However, the ANCAP guidelines shifted quite distinctly in the last year. They're always evolving. The standards are always getting higher. However, uh, they took a, a, a quite, a, quite an um, interesting leap in the last 12 months. And the D-Max was extolling itself as the first vehicle to get that coveted five-star rating, and with good reason, with good reason. So why is that important? Well, if you have a look at the Mitsubishi Express van, the Mitsubishi Express van has just been rated with a zero-star safety rating this year, in 2021. Um, zero stars. Obviously, for a vehicle to get zero stars, that's really bad, really bad. Um, that's going to, no doubt, influence a lot of people who are looking at buying a new van, they go, okay, well, the Mitsubishi Express has just been crash tested. Oh, it's zero stars. What does that mean? Particularly because there's another a number of other vans trading on the market right now on star safety ratings, which are well in excess of this zero. The uh, most recent tested van, uh, as far as I know, outside of the Express, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is, is the Toyota Hiace which got a, a very good uh, star rating, certainly comparatively, uh, to the Express uh, a couple of years ago in 2019. And it's going to be going head to head with this. So it's been pitched as, oh, well, obviously it's possible, you know, our vans might just not be as safe, but clearly it's possible to get a, a high star safety rating because the Toyota High Ace did it recently. That's true, but not under the current uh, guidelines. And in fact, um, other vans that are going to compete with the Mitsubishi Express and CAP themselves admit that it might be unlikely that those vans, if they were retested today, whether they would get the safety rating of two stars or three stars or whatever they have today. And that includes a whole bunch of different vehicles um, you know, from manufacturers such as Hyundai, for example. And this is the thing is that a lot of times uh, manufacturers will, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with them doing this, it's okay, it's legal for them to advertise their star safety ratings from years past, uh, and even put that in the guidelines. But what doesn't necessarily penetrate to the prospective consumer is that the star safety ratings have evolved, they've moved on from those times. And what you're buying is a five-star safety rating vehicle in 2021 doesn't actually reflect that. So let's have a look at that. So we have the Isuzu D-Max rated five stars in 2020 uh, on the current regulations with ANCAP, the first vehicle to do that. It's other um, you know, competitors at the moment. The Ford Ranger uh, is a five-star safety rated utility vehicle, last rated in 2015. The Mitsubishi Triton is a five-star safety rating, uh, last also last rated in 2015. And also, the Volkswagen Amarok, which is, was last rated on its launch in 2011. So its ANCAP safety rating is 10 years old now. And this is one of the critical things here, because uh, if you think this is no big deal and this is fairly self-explanatory, what one thing that is a problem, and it's a continued problem, is the objectivity of your uh, journaling media in the automotive space in Australia. Because last year in 2020, Volkswagen released, and this isn't an attack on Volkswagen, it's just a, 
they're a, uh, an example. And we're going to touch on some other uh, poor examples too, because it's not just Volkswagen. But Volkswagen last year released the Volkswagen Amarok XL. Watch for an upcoming uh, video on that. There's some interesting little features of that uh, Volkswagen XL that you might be interested in. But anyway, for the topic of this discussion, the Volkswagen XL was released. It's a factory-backed chassis extension dual cab. Now, you've been able to get chassis extensions on, a, on dual cabs for some time now. I think it's safe to say in the last few years it's become more popular. Uh, I've seen a lot more uh, commentary in things like social media circles and online about people getting chassis extensions, and they do serve a purpose. Now, I haven't engaged in chassis extensions myself in the past because every time I've spoken to a person who does the chassis extension work, they'll go, oh, well, we're not modifying any of the mechanics, mate. You'll still honor your warranty. But when I go back to the manufacturer, they go, absolutely not. We are not giving you any assertions that we will honor the warranty. So I've never actually gone um, down that path. Although um, I, don't, I don't actually believe that people doing chassis extensions are causing problems to occur in dual cabs. I'm more concerned that if I buy a brand new dual cab or space cab or single cab, I'm paying for a warranty. It's built into the price. Now, if I buy a vehicle, get a chassis extension and void my warranty and something silly happens, like it's a Friday afternoon special and they've just forgotten to fit something to the car correctly and something expensive breaks like an engine transmission differential or something that's going to cost me a significant amount of money that's immediately voided because I did that chassis extension even though it was their poor engineering or installation that caused the problem if they just will not honor it and they say well you cannot definitively prove that uh, it was an engineering fault because it could have been the chassis extension which moved the vehicle outside of its original tolerances that caused the problem, you can kiss your warranty goodbye. And I never wanted to be in that circumstance. But anyway, safe to say, chassis extensions are a lot more popular and a factory backed chassis extension option from a manufacturer does have some level of appeal. And when the, uh, ex, uh, the chassis extended Volkswagen Amarok launched in Australia, obviously there's reviews on it. And I was astounded, absolutely astounded at the reviews and how highly they rated the Volkswagen Amarok. You're talking reviews in the high sevens, low eights. Some, so let's just say for average, somewhere around eight out of 10. Now eight out of 10 in the dual cab space puts that vehicle right up among the contenders. Now it's not, the, it's not at the top, it's back off the top, but it's right in all the mainstream use. So you could look at that review in isolation and go, okay, well it's only a couple of points behind the market leader. So this should be a good option for me. However, one of the things that it doesn't capture is that the Volkswagen Amarok is a five-star safety rated vehicle, and, but it was done back in 2011. It's 10 years old now, and it still doesn't have, even after the... So the vehicle was much maligned when it came out in 2011 because it didn't have rear airbags. But they said, oh, it was still a five-star safety rated vehicle, so it might be okay, but you do need to factor into the decision no rear airbags, but it is a five-star safety rating vehicle. We've gone on 10 years from then, and Volkswagen has not improved the safety specification in terms of a, fitting, a fitment of additional airbags to the Amarok since that time. And I gather, conjecture, purely conjecture in my own personal opinion, I gather that they haven't resubmitted the Amarok for crash testing now or in recent times because they know it's going to perform very poorly. And that can be seen in the fact that they've had a fairly big revision of the Amarok a few years ago now when they launched the V6. The three litre V6 diesel in the Amarok was quite a marked change from the Amarok because I personally know a lot of people who wouldn't have considered the Amarok purely because of its four cylinder two litre engine. So when it hit the market, with a, th a three liter V6, a lot of people more interested. But no, the, in terms of, are there any additional airbags? Are there the modern safety features that we would expect to see in a vehicle? Those things haven't come through. And that's a real problem. And it's insufficient, in my opinion, for an automotive journalist to put as a throwaway line in their review in 2020 of the Volkswagen XL to say, no real airbags, just be aware of that. You know, oh, you know, uh, ANCAP test rating hasn't been done for some time. Might, 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 might be a bit lower now. That is insufficient. That makes it seem from anybody based on the space when you 
de when you dedicate paragraphs to the engine or paragraphs to the additional flexibility of the tray, which is all fine, you can do that. And then one line on safety, that's insufficient. It's insufficient and it's saying that obviously we're not trying to draw your attention to it, dear consumer, because it's not worth your time worrying about. Don't be concerned about it. It's perfectly fine. Nothing to see here. It's just missing, you know, the safety tech of most vehicles, dual cabs on the market now. And that's the reality is that most of the contemporary dual cabs on the market uh, from the mainstream brands have significantly more safety tech in them now than ever before. And the uh, different brands have invested in their vehicles, improving safety tech as they've gone along. A couple of examples. The Ford Ranger, the PX Ranger, when it launched PX Series 1 or just the PX, um, it was it had, it had a facelift uh, a couple of years into the model. And one of the, and they got, they got a, a different styled front end, a few little bits and pieces, some uh, changes in the in the interior and it also got an depending on which variant you bought you either got the optional safety pack the tech pack or you got it standard if you bought something like a wild track now what that got you is it got you things like adaptive cruise control it got you some lane guidance and it got automatic headlights and stuff like that it got you some new tech that ford had worked on integrating that into the vehicle during that model's life so the the px uh, variant ranger although we're a few series in now, is still on the market today. And that model has evolved both in style, the styling of it, and in safety over that life of the vehicle. Other, other makes have done the same thing. So if you have a look at something like a Nissan Navara, the D23, the D23 has an additional uh, uh, safety tech built into that model as well. So for example, uh, I, I think it was the, I think from memory it was the D23 Series 3 that got a 360 degree camera. Um, that you could view from the dash, for example. These additional safety technology features have been built into the vehicle over time. But with the Amarok, we haven't seen that same shift of these new features built into the vehicle and we're still relegated to a car that has front airbags only and no protection for the rear. And they haven't re-rated the vehicle, so we're still stuck here on, a, on the last known uh, ANCAP rating, which is back in 2011, it is, it, there is no way, in my opinion, uh, and I think it's fairly safe to say that the Amarok is going to achieve anything like a five-star safety rating in 2021. And this is disingenuous reporting, and it's misleading you as a potential purchaser of these vehicles. So let's take a comparison of the flip side. When the Great Wall Ute first launched in Australia, that was back in about, I think that was the first generation, I might be wrong, but um, 2009, it got a two-star safety rating. And up until the Mitsubishi Express van, it held the record for equal lowest score. Uh, that two-star safety rating, that vehicle was absolutely lampooned the very, very first Great Wall uh, Ute that launched in Australia. When the very first one came out, it didn't have an airbag. Um, and it said there's no way that a vehicle on the market today should be sold without an airbag. That was a comment of many, many people uh, in the automotive media. That the Great Wall Ute, it was unacceptable that that vehicle did not have a airbag. And then in 2017, we had the Ford Mustang launch and it got a two-star safety rating. Now, it depends on what journalist you listen to or read as to how, whether they were outraged on that two-star safety rating or not. Some were, some were very, very cross about it, uh, saying that it was completely unacceptable for a vehicle to be launched, particularly with the mass appeal of the Ford Mustang and only having a two-star safety rating. Um, and then others said, oh, you know, well, it's not really a big deal. So it depends. But regardless, I think it's safe to say if you're going to review a car in relation to its peers and you could say this car has a five star safety rating on current, uh, current ANCAP standards. This has a five star safety rating and it wasn't reviewed that long ago. This car, in the case of talking about dual cabs, looking at the Volkswagen Amarok, this hasn't had an ANCAP review since 2011 and doesn't even have rear airbags. We can't in good conscience recommend this to you because there is no, the safety features are too far lacking. That's the sort of review that came out when the, great, the very first edition of the Great Wall Ute came out. We can't recommend this in good conscience because of the, the lack of safety features. It's cheap, but it has no safety features. And the Volkswagen Amarok, compared to its peers, is not especially cheap. 
but it's just lacking that safety technology that you should be entitled to and expect, quite frankly, when you have a look at the vehicles that that vehicle competes against. So what does that mean? That means that Volkswagen are just not investing in the vehicle. And admittedly, the Amarok is due for replacement. It's going to be uh, replaced either uh, next year or the year after, based on information as best as I've been able to find it at this point in time. But that's still a fair way that that vehicle um, is going to have to last before it's replaced and we have a new one on our shores. Now, regarding the Volkswagen Amarok, there's nothing wrong with a vehicle having a model life of 10 years. If you have a look at the D40 Navara, that went for about 10 years. If you have a look at the previous KUN 26R Hilux, that went for about 10 years. However, what we saw in most of these vehicles, and particularly in the case of something like the Ford Ranger or the D23 Navara, we've seen the manufacturer invest heavily, even in safety areas, to try and improve that vehicle over its model life. Because 10 years out of a dual cab is something that you can expect to see in terms of total model life, that vehicle being sold to the public. So it's not outside uh, the realm of possibility that those vehicle manufacturers are saying, well, we need to get 10 years out of that investment, but we will keep investing in it and improving it over the lifespan. And while Volkswagen have in introduced a new engine, the safety has lagged. There is no question about that. And it's unacceptable for a vehicle to be reviewed in context to its peers and say, oh, it's got a V6 engine and it's got the option to have a longer tray. Therefore, it's just as good as every anything else, but you probably don't want to have an accident in it. You know, compared to the... Um, the safety features you can get into another vehicle. You know, it would be better to have an accident in a five-star safety rated vehicle as opposed to a two-star safety rating vehicle. Now, I'm not saying what the Volkswagen Amarok is rated at because I don't know. However, if you have a look at the Isuzu D-Max, five stars, and then have a look at the Mitsubishi Express Van, zero stars, and let's have a look as to why the Mitsubishi Express got zero stars. There was some... Uh, issues with how what the impact did, where the latch on the door came open on one test, um, it created a cavity in the side of the vehicle. They're different dynamics, and I would expect the Volkswagen Amarok, quite frankly, to perform better than that. But having said that, one thing that definitely impacted its zero star score was no AEB, uh, no lane guidance, and things like adaptive cruise control, 360 degree cameras. It doesn't have any of that uh, safety tech on board. And that at ANCAP's own admission, impacted the score of the vehicle because they expect in their ANCAP ratings now that these vehicles will have this built in. Now, if you have a look at the Amarok, does it look closer to the D-Max in terms of safety features or does it look closer to the Mitsubishi Express van? I'll leave that for you to decide and you can figure out where on current safety standards the Volkswagen Amarok would sit. This has to become a greater focus for automotive media. They're trying to get, the, everything seems to be a bit of an also ran. I you know it's all, you know, if there's a real standout, we'll rate it a little bit higher. And then I you know if it's a little bit worse, then we'll rate it a little bit down. But you know, they're all within say 0.5 or 0.7 points of one another. It's not a massive shift. Even if it's a full percentage point, like it's a nine out of 10 as opposed to an eight, it's not a massive, it's not a massive, massive jump. A nine out of 10 vehicle compared to an eight out of 10 vehicle, it's not really gonna sway me from looking at that eight out of 10 vehicle. Eight out of 10 is still a quite an acceptable score in my mind. And there might be some attribute of that eight out of 10 vehicle compared to the nine out of 10 vehicle that just suits me better. That just, I wanna own that one. I, I know it's a compromise in that, but that particular element is not of importance to me. But I would think that safety would be, and safety technology fitted into a vehicle and your ability to survive a crash, which is effectively what ANCAP seeks to do, is trying to determine your, the, what, uh, relative to its peers, how much is this vehicle going to protect you in the case of an accident? I would assume that most people would want to have things as safe as they can get them, um, all things being equal. So what do we do with all this? Well, we have to take this into account. And it's one of the things, it's becoming increasingly a problem, like tow ratings, when automotive journalists won't tell you that, I mean, if you load this thing full on the tow bar, you actually can't get anybody in the car or you can't yourself get in the car. You know, they don't tell you that. So your first run in with trouble, potentially, if you don't go and do some of your own maths on it, is to find out, oh, geez, I'm overloaded when a police officer pulls me over and puts me on a mobile scale. Similarly, if you don't check these things out for yourself, you may find yourself 
in uh, a situation, hopefully not, where an accident takes place and you go, oh, geez, well, I thought that vehicle would have had that because it seems to be, you know, rated highly as a five-star safety rating. So surely it should have all the features of a, of a Ford Ranger or everything. And the Volkswagen Amarok rear airbag situation is not a new issue. It's not a new issue. This has been lambasted on the, on the Amarok since its very launch 10 years ago. And Amarok and Volkswagen has just flatly refused to invest in um, technology to do that. And they're not the only manufacturer. Like Toyota do this too with the 79 series. Now, admittedly, the 79 series single cab, uh, what they were under pressure with the single cab because they, had, they dealt to a lot of corporate clients such as mining companies and such who want to make sure from their duty of care that all their employees are in a five-star safety rated vehicle. So Toyota went away and they did a, um, a update on the 79 series and they managed to crash test the 79 series single cab with some additional safety features and, uh, and uh, structural changes. They managed to get a five-star safety rating on the 79 series single cab. However, all of those changes didn't transfer to the 79 series dual cab, for example. And I see a lot of 79 series dual cabs driving around my area, although I'm regional. And those changes that would have taken, that took actually, definitively took the single cab to a five star safety rating, they didn't invest to change that in the dual cab. So the dual cab remains untested. And that, you know, if, if we're going to do ANCAP safety ratings, if this is actually something that we're going to do, surely to goodness you should be required to crash test your vehicle so that we can provide that information to consumers. How they're able to get away with have ne having never crash tested that vehicle. And again, like Amarok, I would assume that reason is purely because they know it won't rate well. So why do the crash test? They shouldn't be allowed to do that. It either has to be an equal playing field or ANCAP have to figure out some way based on a previous crash test, even 10 years ago, that based on the, um, the movement of our expectations and the, and the ANCAP standards on what safety tech we expect to be in vehicles, then this is what the rating would likely be today. And if that means your vehicle has gone from a five-star safety rating to a one-star safety rating over a five-year period, so be it. If you don't like that, resubmit your vehicle for testing and that might bring it up a little bit. But otherwise, that's where it's at. And we can't, as consumers, you know, rely on anybody but ourselves to kind of sort this mess out at the moment because the automotive media are not telling us this information. They're not saying to us, look, this vehicle was crash tested 10 years ago. And quite frankly, the fact that it hasn't, it hasn't been crash tested again, or it's likely a two, maybe three, maybe a one uh, crash test rating today should rule this vehicle from your contention because it's just not providing you with an adequate level of safety relative to its peers. This is a real issue. It's like this issue with tow ratings and, and journalists not calling out manufacturers who are making unrealistic real world towing, um, make, uh, unreal tow, giving you unrealistic towing expectation. It's unacceptable, it needs to stop. It has to stop and we have to have some sort of a level playing field so that we can compare adequately. What we have traditionally used to get that even playing field and to be able to compare objectively is we've looked to media journalists in, in the automotive space to tell us the truth, to say, here's this, because we don't have, sometimes we don't have the ability to road test seven different competitors. So you'll try and cut your list down by having a look at what journalists say. But if they say, oh, all the vehicles are within 0.7 points with another, any, and a common phrase is, any of these would be a fine choice. It doesn't really cut through it for you when one of the contenders, or maybe more than that, um, you know, if the 79 series dual cab, the Amarok, and then the other current main, you know, mainstream dual cab competitors were all in a, in a test together, then at a point you should say, well, look, the 79 series in terms of safety, it just doesn't cut mustard, so you shouldn't consider it. Like if you're out in, you know, the outback, if you're in outback Australia and, you know, safety is not a big concern for you, but you need something that's rugged, it's tough as nails, maybe the 79 series is an option for you. But 
in any other case, if you want to, if it's a dual cab, the only real reason that you're going to buy a dual cab, really, with a few exceptions, is that you want to move your kids and family around. And we wouldn't recommend, you know, we can't in good conscience recommend you put your children in the back seat of this vehicle compared to other vehicles that this vehicle competes with. The other ones, there's just too much of a gap in, gap in safety standard for us to consider this vehicle an acceptable option for you. And this is from someone who I think the 79 series has its place. I actually think that the Amarok is, a, I quite like the Amarok. Putting its, you know, Volkswagen servicing and cost of parts and all that, that's for you to look at. Um, putting all that to one side, when I look at the Amarok, I like the space of the cabin. I like its boxy design, very wide um, cabin, lots of space inside it. I really, really like that. I still think, and I know some people don't agree with it, and admittedly, I haven't driven the new D-Max yet, but up until this point, I have thought that the Amarok was the most comfortable ride in, in its field for me. That's just me. You may disagree. That's fine. I quite like those things about the Amarok. I like that it has a V6 option. But would I buy it if I was going to buy a new car? I'm not throwing my money down on a V6 dual cab that doesn't have rear airbags in 2021. If I'm buying a new car this year, I expect that to be fitted. And there's other very capable options, even without the V6, that are going to capably pull everything that the V6 is going to pull. I'm just not interested in, you know, a, a friend of mine challenged me on that many, many years ago about uh, if you, you know, if you've got children and you're going to put them in a car, wouldn't you put them in the safest vehicle you possibly could? And it really, it really challenged me because I grew up, you know, buying the, a cheap car as an apprentice, um, completely, you know, void of any safety tech. Whereas now we actually have some options to put um, young people in some really capable, safe vehicles. And wouldn't we rather do that than put them in something that might, um, you know, have not offered them the maximum protection we could have given them in the event that they have an accident? But in any event, that's all for you to decide. So we do need to take this into account. Apparently, journalists aren't going to do this for us. So we need to demand better. And we're going to have to do more of this work ourselves. When we're looking to buy a vehicle, we have to go beyond the reviews and we're going to have to stat crunch effectively and do some digging to find out what stacks up. I do, I'm do. i not advocating you go buy a D-Max, but I do congratulate D-Max on, uh, on bringing this to people's attention. You can see the link in the description. You can check out the link, uh, the, the video and ad for yourself. It is an ad. Um, and they and I have, you know, make no illusions, they are advertising uh, their five-star safety rating on current ANCAP standards because they can, because their ute did get five stars. If they only got four stars, I don't think they'd be making that case because it's hard to say, well, we got four stars under the, under the current regime, but, you know, a couple of years ago there was a five-star. I don't think they'd probably want to be drawing that to everyone's attention. But the fact that they got five stars um, under the current regs, makes them untouchable in this space until somebody else uh, gets uh, their vehicle uh, accredited on the, same, on the same level as them. But it's a good distinction to make. It's well worthwhile. Um, I know this was a long video, but I appreciate it. If you're interested in the Volkswagen Amarok XL, watch out for the video upcoming on that one. Thanks for watching.